Hello everyone, welcome to our edition of the Ohio Guys here. I'm Christian Ocampo, and today I'm being joined by another uh, voice actor guest that has not been on this channel since the year 2013. And I'm happy to say we are having this great gentleman here. We have Mark X. Laskowski. How are you doing, sir? Doing great. And yourself? I'm doing fine. Uh, just getting this opportunity to finally get an interview with you. Been so many years since the first one. I'm happy to kind of come back for this revisit and kind of like update on, on what you've been doing since then. As well as letting people know what's what's new for Mark Axelskowski. So hoping to the X is silent, get... by the way. Oh, is it? That's only that's only for print. There's oh. another there's another Mark Laskowski on IMDb, so it lists me as Mark Laskowski too. So I added the X a long time ago to uh, so I could be Mark X Laskowski one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I did not know. I don't think anyone knew about that. So, no good updates on that part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, going to the questions now to get more updates. Uh, tell us, uh, what has been new for you, both in life and your career, since this last interview done back in the year 2013? Well, that's a long time. That's seven years of stuff I have to go through, but... Uh... I've still been uh, plugging along at Sentai Studios. Uh, I, uh, since 2013, I've uh, had a job as a liquor salesman at uh, a local, uh, a state local uh, store called Specs. Uh, so I sold a lot of liquor for them, but uh, I have since quit since uh, COVID-19 hit in May. Actually, it hit in March, but uh, I quit in May just because they were not doing enough for, for my uh, taste as far as... Uh, trying to keep their employees safe. Uh, other than that, though, I've just been here with my wife, uh, enjoying life and doing what I do. Just recently did a uh, McDonald's commercial, which you'll never see me in unless you really have a Zoom feature and uh, stop motion. Uh, it's called McDonald's Good Neighbors. It's a 30-second commercial, and I've got three seconds right in the middle of it. But if you if you recognize me anyway, so most people don't know what I look like. So good good luck. <laughs> I mean, for those who are seeing this second interview, they can always look back on the first one. So, yeah, I don't think it's that too hard to. Dude, I don't think we did the first one on video, though, did we? Oh, we did. We did? Yes. OK, my bad. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <I'm> <laughs> I forget things easily. <laughs> It, it's okay. It, it happens. <laughs> All right. So uh, to carry on for more of the updates from the last seven years or so since the last interview, uh, 2015 was a pretty good year for both Sentai anime and a bit for you. Uh, a very special show came out on the fall of 2015 called Parasite, which was on Toonami. So why don't you tell us, what was it like working on Parasite? Um, well, I'm, unfortunately, a lot of my answers are going to be the same for as what it was like working on these shows. I do remember doing that show, and I remember it was, uh, it was a lot different because I was playing it with Greg Ayers. He was, the, he was my Parasite, and I was the human form of the character. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, that's about all I can remember from that one, though, honestly. And it's it's hard to find. I I went to, to a convention since then and was only able to find that character as something that represented me that the vendors were selling. Uh, and it was, it was actually just a picture of that character inside the hand character that uh, Brittany Karbowski played. Yeah, uh, I think people really enjoyed your character when it first came out. They just, I think it's relatable in a way, just how kind of aloof he was, <clears throat> how he wasn't super serious. So there was, there was a type of love that the fandom didn't enjoy from your character. They usually call me for aloof. <laughs> aloof and ball pain, those are my two specialties. <laughs> 
<laughs> anytime need, anybody gets kneed in the crotch or punched in the crotch, they call me. <laughs> in fact, I had one episode where that's all they called me in for. I think uh, Tiffany Grant was writing the script on that one. And in the notes on the script, it said, call Mark Laskowski for this part. And it was uh, in episode three of Noir, where uh, I was a security guard. The girl, uh, I, I come up, I sneak up behind the, the girl in a library and I picked her up by the arm. I laughed. She kicks me in the balls. And then I fall back into the aisle where the other security guards shoot me in the back. So 10 seconds of work. <laughs> it, it's, it's these moments where you, you just got to appreciate the, the, the funny aspect, the comedy aspect. The best these job shows. in the world. <laughs> <laughs> never have to learn any lines. I don't have to do any homework. I just go in and do my thing and go home. <laughs> oh, you said the best. <laughs> All right. Uh, another uh, question. And just keeping on the trend on the funny characters going on, uh, I want you to tell us what was like working on Mitsuboshi Colors? Now, that's the one where I was Pops, and I believe Kyle Jones directed that one. No, John Swayze directed that one. Um, I had a lot of fun doing that one. Uh, another character where I was just kind of aloof and goofy. Uh, that seems to be my forte. Um, and like I said, I don't really remember a lot about uh, characters or storyline because I basically just go in and record that voice. So I don't even, I mean, I've met a lot of the people I work with, but I've only met them outside of Sentai. I usually only meet them when I'm doing theater and we'll be talking and I say I do voiceover and they're like, oh, I've been doing voiceover. And I'm like, oh, that's you. And yeah, so that's how I formed a lot of friendships that way. Uh, Brittany Karbowski was one. We worked together in theater and uh, Kyle was probably... Kyle and John were probably the only two friends I made that were actually uh, <clears throat> in the building because they were directing the shows. Yeah, no, de definitely. Uh, great directors. They always have a joy bringing you in. Again, with these uh, funny characters where, you, that, again, that's your for forte. That's, I guess, you know, that's how they kind of see you where you're, you're the funny guy both in the studio and outside the studio. That's, that could be serious, too. I like to play the bad guys, actually. That's where I have the most fun, typically. But they don't call me for those, usually. Not, at least not in voiceover. Okay, for sure. I like I like to see that now. I want to see how you sound this uh, over-the-top building. That's, that's something I'm hoping to see you know, from this year or next year. Whatever new anime comes under Sentai's uh, catalog. I'd like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so going from uh, Mitsuboshi Coders, uh, so why don't you tell us uh, what was it like working on Girls' Last Tour? Uh, Girls' Last Tour was an interesting one because I was a, little, was a little bit more uh, serious. It was a little more of a dramatic role. That's another uh, Kyle Jones one that I did uh, that he called me in for. Um, I really don't have much to say about that other than that it was it was nice to play a dramatic part for a, for a change and there were some funny moments in it I do remember having some funny moments in there. Yeah, this one I really enjoyed because I heard a lot of good things before this show got an English dub. Uh, it was mostly focused on the two uh, young girls about their story, running a very tiny tank because they're also tiny. Right, and then and then seeing them meet other characters along the way like yours at first and this is kind of interesting when i first heard your character i did not know it was you because i i'm again i'm used to hearing your your funny voice or just your, the way you talk when you're in the booth that makes it funny when, when you when you're not even trying to be funny yeah so when i heard this character i'd look up and like no way it's mark <laughs> ah nice <laughs> so i really enjoyed uh just getting to you know ha 
hear you play something a little different and a show that has nothing to do with comedy because it's a desolate world, post-apocalyptic. And it, it did help have that bit of that comedy, bit of, bit of laughs to kind of get us away from the already depressing, sad state of the world that we, the audience, are seeing. And then having your character come along the way to brighten the mood a little bit, get us a uh, pulse away from from that world that we're already seeing. So definitely, I, I love this this anime. I own the limited edition box set. I I hope more people check it out because it's it's very different than some of the other past animes fans like me have usually come to see. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, like I said, with Sentai's amazing catalog, we will see what else they will pick up from from here on out. All right, and then another transition from that show, and then to another one that really, really took uh, the internet by storm. Why don't you tell us about what was that working on? Domestic Girlfriend. That's another Swayze one. And I don't remember a lot about the plot of that one. Uh, I remember being sort of a comic relief, sort of another aloof guy. Um, do you, can you fill me in and rem- remind me of what was going on in that one? Oh boy. <laughs> so much I can talk about. Basically is about a, uh, uh, a teenager in his in high school life. Uh, his his father is divorced, so it's just him and his dad. His father gets remarried to a woman who has two daughters. One is his uh, teacher, and the other one is a uh, is a schoolmate. And it turns out by the first episode, we find out both him and the girl they had intercourse within the first 10, 20 seconds. Oh, there the we go. Does, does the first episode. <laughs> See, they never in. tell me this stuff when I go in and, on, and read, read for them. <laughs> they just say, this is your character. Read the lines. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, bit of spoiler territory for those who haven't seen it. Uh, the father and the mother don't really know that that ever happened. Uh, both the, the, the guy and the girl. They never even tell their folks that, hey, uh, we actually uh, did it in the bedroom not too long ago. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what's probably why. All right. <laughs> Keep it in the family, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Who did so, I play in that one? Uh, you play the uh, the father the, of the son. Oh, okay. I was the father in that one? Yeah. <clears throat> I believe so. Surprised I don't remember more about that. If that was a larger role, then he, your, you know, the father and mother were kind of and out of the show, so you don't get to hear too much of his perspective. But I would really like to hear what their thoughts would have been if the no, the news was broken, because that was always the. Uh, it was kind of there where you, as the audience, you just wondering like, will they tell the the parents? that they did it, or they're going to keep it secret until the day they die. So, that's the intricate that was uh, kind of played around with during the uh, during the uh, the show. Okay. It, it's a fun watch. Uh, it's not a show I recommend for younger audiences. I, I this well, is, The whole intercourse thing, yeah. I would assume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's it is targeted to more mature audience with very uh, risky moments. A lot of a lot of moments where it's not really meant for younger eyes. So I'll just leave it at that. But good shows just to enjoy, just to kick back. Uh, you know, it, it it's not a you know it, it won't be a five star show by any means of the imagination. It, it is. It's a fun watch, just for what it is. So, I I've enjoyed it for for what the show was trying to be and 
where it was going. So I I don't hate the show. I, I enjoy it because of what it tried to do and what it was trying to tell us story wise. That's Good my deal. Yeah. <laughs> that's just my <laughs> review, my my short review analysis. So excellent, excellent. All right. So going from that show that was really risky and something a bit more uh you know, we'll show for everyone. Uh, why don't you tell us about how it's like working on the Manchi and Sword Orario? Uh, you're going to have to fill me in on that one, too. I think Kyle directed that one. Is that right? Correct. Uh, what was my character in that one? You played uh, Garth. Uh, I, I guess I'll call him a little bit of a generic uh dwarf x wielder if you see those oh okay is is that is that the one that i picked up from um uh chris ayers he originally voiced that that one Mm -hmm. yeah uh chris has been on retirement uh, due to health issues and uh he's been in and out of the hospital recently so if if you haven't known that uh, if you want to send him an email or just send him a hey get well buddy kind of thing that would be greatly appreciated from all of us. We love him so much and miss him a lot. Um, that one uh, is a voice that I that I did pick up from him, so I've been trying to do it justice as he did uh, in the past. Uh, I really don't know a lot about the character other than he holds an axe and he's a very smart alecky kind of dwarf sort of gravelly sort of guy. Uh, I've done his voice probably about three or four episodes now. Uh, or three or four at least uh, voice recording sessions that I've gone in for for him. But that's a fun one. I like I like doing those kind of characters. I like doing the, the action stuff. Uh, it tends to be a little bit harder on the voice than uh, just the straightforward kind of thing. But overall, it's 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 usually pretty gratifying. Yeah, this one I enjoyed. Demanche, I enjoyed when they came out. I was doing a lot of hype, a lot of Good things. And I was like, okay, this is such enjoyable. Just like seeing the adventurers just have these great like fights, these great moments when they're in the dungeon. And then seeing your character or you take over the character of Garth. I, I just enjoyed him just with his axe, his uh the way he talks, like he's not he's not too meat headed in a way. He does have a <laughs> He does have a bit of a of a critical thinking, a bit of like a uh, analysis kind of brain, where he can he can see like what his opponents are doing, like their plan of action is, so he can kind of predict that, counter that. So he has to get to get that the ability to to work his way through these uh, these tense battles. And this is one where I really did not know it was you on that way for the credits. I'm like, oh, oh my god, like Marks can do this voice. <laughs> those are my favorite. Vo- those are my favorite roles when people, at least in the, and especially in theater, when I can walk amongst the audience after the show and nobody knows I was even in the show, even though I may have had a larger role or whatever. Those are my favorite. I like to blend in. Uh, I don't like uh, recognition, so to speak. Um, I'm not after fame. I just I just like doing I just like acting, basically is what it boils down to. And the people that I work with, I just love everybody over at Sentai is awesome. Uh, the people I've met in the theater, just I just love it. I miss it greatly. It's been a long time since I've actually been on stage. I'm working on a show right now with my wife, um, Julia, that we're hoping to get put on sometime soon, but we're still waiting for all this. Uh, pandemic shit to to boil down a little bit so we can actually have an audience right no no i respect that i respect actors that act because that's that's their you know you know that's their life that's their uh their what forte. I do. yeah so no I, I appreciate you saying that and just speak, you know for me watching these enemies i just always appreciate hearing your guys's acting chops trying to give something new you know, behind the booth, whenever you work with either Kyle or whoever might be behind the helm, just giving them something that 
you either haven't done before. And then when we, the audience, hear your voice, we can like say, oh, okay, the, you know, Mark Axelskowski can also do something really different outside his uh, usual uh, uh, type of ar character archetype. So you have tons of tools in your toolbox that I'm pretty sure you're happy to break out whenever yeah. the opportunity breaks out. It's true. So yeah, the Manchi Love Show. I'm still trying to finish up the uh, season three on High Dive. So you have a few more episodes to go before it's it's completely on High Dive. So yeah, hoping to see what your character Garth will do. Yes, as the uh, all right, more spoiler territory. They're in the part where the monsters are trying to get back to the dungeon. So we'll, we'll see how how that concludes. So, <laughs> so yeah. All right. And then another show I really enjoyed that I was waiting since 2014 to get its dub. And it finally did by good old Sentai to go back into their old library and pick out what should be dubbed next. Shiro Bako, what was that for him on that show? This was uh, probably one of my favorites I've done in a long time. Uh, it's it's a large role for me. It's If you look at the character, he looks just like me, which is hilarious. Uh, it's just my normal voice, so it's probably the... The closest character I've ever done to my actual self. Uh, I had a great time. I had a blast doing it. It came right uh, in the middle of the pandemic uh, back in May, I think, was when we recorded it. So it was a it was a godsend as far as working uh, at that point. That was probably the first thing I did after I quit my job at the liquor store. And uh, I got to work with Shannon, who uh, is an amazing director. I really love him. Uh, we've become fast friends uh, since probably for about three or four years now. I know he, he came to my last crawfish boil, which was back in 20, sorry, 2019. I didn't get to have one this year. Probably doesn't look like I'm going to have one in 2021 either, but uh, we have a good time for those. And I just had a blast recording that with him. I just thought it was hilarious and fun and uh, realistic, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it, it does. I'm I'm very happy you got to meet with uh, Sean Reed. Yeah, me another, too. Another another great director that has already accumulated tons of shows under his belt. As yes. as. I come as you come as the new guy, the new director at Sentai. Yeah, he's one. He's definitely one of the newer ones. Him and Mike Hamamoto are probably the two newest that I've worked with. I got just got to recently got to work with Mike on something that I'm really proud of because he brought out of me a lot. Uh, the other directors sort of let me lean on my usual tricks or usual things, but he picked me for this one. Actually, John Swayze cast me for it, but uh, 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 Mike ended up picking up the series from him, and he just is really a fine director and got some really good dramatic work out of me for the first time in a long time, where I wasn't relying on my usual silly voices or, or tricks of uh, screaming and being weird. <laughs> I got to be myself but just really dark. And I also got to work with uh, another good friend of mine, uh, John Grimion, who um, is actually the person who got me my first audition with ADV when it was called ADV uh, back in 1996. So I've been doing this for 25 years now. Now that I didn't even know about, you know, yeah. with, uh, John Grimion hooking you up. Yeah. That, hell, I, I don't think even uh, I would, know about that years ago so i'm actually happy to hear it now uh again you weren't even it's... born then were you no <laughs> um, no even even the last <laughs> even these past few years i don't think anyone would have uh you know told me this kind of story so i'm happy to kind of hear from you uh firsthand so yeah you know great insight uh 
good to hear yours working with uh, Mike Komodo, no amazing guy. Uh, Shannon, I just can't stop saying good things about him. Yeah. I'm, uh, he's he's such a sweet guy, too. I just love that guy. Yeah, I'm just happy what he did with uh, Shiro Bako. He gave both the veterans and some of the newer actors in the scene a right. chance to shine in this. I call this the anime within an anime. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. So I'm directing an anime, so yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. And I love my fried chicken. <laughs> oh, you sure do. Uh, love the show. Love learning everything about the the production behind making anime. Just learning about these different uh, job titles, these different uh, 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 tasks that these uh, these workers do behind the scenes. It's like we're we're getting educated, just us, the audience, who enjoy anime. Now we get to see how anime is made, and it's not as easy as we would have thought it would be. We're oh, seeing no. how hard it is, <laughs> and you guys make it sound so hard. I have the easy part. I just go in the booth and I make f- funny noises, you know. So for everybody else, it's a it's a, I'm sure it's a lot more intense, a lot more uh, a lot more. Uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for work heavy i guess i just get to go in and have fun with my friends so it's like i said it's the best job i've ever had and i'm very happy to be able to keep doing it and it's thanks to people like you and and fans that uh keep me coming back so thank you i appreciate it yeah you're welcome uh hopefully we we can keep this uh this new new trend for you just getting to Get you know play more of these type of characters to get more they have they have more influence in the show itself you know not yeah. just a few episodes but these these characters that are actually doing something rather be you know just I, I don't, I'm not going to say just you know just giving more work for the other characters but at least making something as a whole with the rest of the characters so like in right. Shirobako then making anime, you know, I would, I just want to see him make sure it's complete without causing any more work for the rest of his crew. Right. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, sure. Baco would love it. Uh, hope we get, I, I just hope we get more shows like these in the future. Just more of how M is made and what other stuff we, we might not know as fans on how else M can be made. So, We'll see what happens from here on out. All right. So uh, one of the newest shows that just got announced uh, a few weeks ago on January. Uh, this one just got a redub from the original dub from California. Uh, why don't you tell us what was that working on Blade the Immortal? That was another good one because um, I was a bad guy again. Uh, in fact, I was a number of bad guys. If I if I'm right about that, um, a little a lot darker than uh, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about today. Uh, in fact, it's uh, pretty sexually explicit at one point. In fact, I'm uh, I don't exactly rape the lead character, but uh, I attack her and then am like. Sh- uh, then I think I'm killed. Uh, that's that's another thing about most of my characters. I that's the thing that Shirobako was was a lot different than because I didn't die. Usually I'm dead within the first two or three episodes of when I appear. <laughs> so it's uh, my tenure on those. It tends to be a little shorter than most. But yeah, that was a, that was a good time. I think uh, I think uh, Shannon directed that one too, didn't he? Yeah, I, I yeah. think he did. Yeah, no, he did. He did. I, I yeah, did. yeah. I'm I'm happy that uh, since I got another uh, samurai uh, sword fighting right genre series, I know they have other ones, but this one in particular, it, it really has the uh, a built-in fan base from the past decade or 15 years or so. People really know its name. People have either read the manga. Or they really saw the the original uh, English dub from back then. 
and now seeing it get revamped, you know, with a new fresh coat of paint, where it still has that that classic uh, feel, but yeah, with a new image stuff to kind of give us a new a new flavor as well. So I'm very excited to hear you and everyone else from Houston see what you guys uh, did with this this classic series, and I'm I'm very excited because. I, I always love me some good old samurai uh, slashing and sword wielding. So, yeah, it's going to be a good one. I can tell you that. Excellent. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to buy my DVD for that. All right. Uh, so to kind of like uh, transition from that. From your past work, if you can be any of the characters you have played in real life, who will you be and you can mix and match? Well, honestly, uh, the only person, the only character that I really related to on a personal level has got to be uh, in Shirabaku. Um, that was already close to my demeanor. And like I said, it even looks like me. Um, Probably the one I'm most famous for is is um, High School of the Dead, though, as uh, as a Kiro Hirano uh, was his name. Um, unfortunately, though, I don't share his passion for for guns and weaponry. Uh, so I tend to, the people who tend to like that one are tend to be a little bit more. Um, have a violent streak than I do. So uh, I tend to not to talk about that character too much only because of that. But I did have a great time doing that character. I love doing things that are, you know, even out of bounds for me. I mean, a lot of my stuff is just really sick and twisted and I enjoy the catharsis of that, but I don't necessarily like bringing it into my real life. Yeah, no, I think you you broke it down nicely. Uh, yeah, you got certain characters that you can relate to, and then those that they have like certain traits or certain things that they enjoy, but you yourself wouldn't in real life. So, right, that 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 can definitely. But it's uh, good to indulge those things on screen and in these characters because I get to get them out of my system and say, oh yeah, that, I suppose that could be fun in some some respects, but you know. I don't want to be a mass race, mass murderer or rapist. So, <laughs> so this is my only shot, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely not real life. <laughs> not real life. <laughs> All right. So, uh, is there anything else coming out that you can't talk about, or anything not you want to talk about this time? The last thing that uh, I think I could talk about was was Blade of the Immortal and Shirabako. So uh, everything else that I've done since then, I think I'm still uh, on uh, NDA for. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, the Manchi is still going on. It's it's not done on high dive, so each week it will drop a new episode. So oh, this good. so this uh, Friday should be uh, the next episode. Uh, and then whenever Blade of the Mortal does come to high dive, and whenever that gets on DVD release, it might be really on DVD right now, or it's next month. I, I forget what the date the date release is, but I guess that's the newest thing uh, viewers out there can look forward to. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, a hell of a lot of anime to look forward to. Indeed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> And then to uh, wrap up this uh, interview, uh, why don't you tell us any Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any other social media for the fans to contact you at? Uh, yeah, you should be able to find me at Actor Tex on all of those, A-C-T-O-R-T-E-X. Uh, I'm that under Facebook. I'm that under uh, Instagram. Uh, I don't really do Twitter. Um but uh, I've been looking for somebody, if there's any of you uh, aspiring uh, website makers out there, I've come out with a, uh, a line of jelly that I'm selling called Caustic Jelly. It's, uh, it's a hot apple pie is what I call it. It's a very spicy, uh, 
but savory uh, apple jelly. It's really good stuff. I, I'm actually sell, uh, selling it to um, a local restaurant who's local here in Houston, and they also have uh, in San Diego, I believe, called Boss Cat Kitchen and Grill, and I'm part of their uh, charcuterie board. So that's fun. I've been doing that this year. And uh, I'm, like I said, I'm working on a, a show called Tenderly, which is uh, the Rosemary Clooney story. It's uh, me and my wife. Julia plays uh, Rosemary Clooney, and I play 10 other characters in her life. Her therapist, Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, um, her mother, her sister, her uncle, her priest. It's going to be a good show. So as soon as we find a stage to put it on, I uh, appreciate if you came out and saw it, if you're in the Houston area. Actually, we're looking to tour it around the country, too, so maybe I'll be uh, showing up around you sometime in the near future, hopefully. Yeah, no, definitely. If you do come to Chicago, either message me or let me know somehow. That way I can Will book in advance. I'd be happy to see you. You know, You're in Chicago you. now? I've always been in Chicago. So. You've always been in Chicago? Why are you? Are, didn't you mention the Ohio guys before? It doesn't matter where we live. It's just it was a name because Greg Harris was the one that named us. So that's ah uh, right. okay, okay. I got you. I got you. I'm from Ohio. I don't know if you knew that. I'm from uh, from the Cleveland area, a little suburb called Parma, Ohio. That's where I was born and raised. So I've always got a soft spot for anybody from Ohio. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that I did know for a long while now. So I'm glad that. You still have some affinity towards your old, your old uh, hometown, home yep. state. Definitely do. Definitely do. All right. Well, thank you, Mark, for this uh, second interview. I know it's been a long time since the first one. You know, I'm, I'm happy to make this more of a update on what has been happening new for you, both in your career, in your life. Uh, whenever you get get a, that website done hopefully someone with uh with great technological uh, <laughs> mindset comes along i'll be happy to put your website link in this uh, video down below great. so uh, that will be definitely in the description box Excellent. so give it the great work hope to keep seeing you play these different characters now from in this new decade that we're in so the 20s would be an interesting uh, time frame for anime and for actors such as yourself. Definitely, definitely. Well, thank you, Christian. I really appreciate the, pr appreciate talking to you. We had a good time. Yep, same here, same here. And uh, thank you to our viewers for tuning in for this episode of the Ohio Guys here. Thank you all, and we will be see you next time. Bye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>